I hope he's not sealed it. He's squeezed cope to see him claw. It's a beautiful day here today. I'm here in the Methow Valley and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this regalia that I'm wearing. My name that I'm known here in on the Colville Confederate Tribes, it, my English name is Dan Nanamkin. Thunder and lightning. And today I'm dressed up. It's been over a year ever since COVID strapped. And so I have not been able to dress up and to dance our powwows in a very long time. So to me, I'm really happy to be able to be dressed up today and to adorn. Um, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our regalia. So first of all, um, I think that to dispel some of the stereotypes and myths is very important. For one thing, I often hear non-Indigenous people say costumes, and costumes is not appropriate. To us, costumes is something you wear, you know, um, for Halloween. H costume is something that you uh, portray yourself to be. But this here is our spiritual regalia. This is our things that we wear in our ceremonies that we only wear at times that uh, are very meaningful, you know, that we come dressed in our very best. Um, this here is um, a lifetime of work to make these outfits. And people such as my dear family, um, that's all they do is, is they're known through uh, out Indian country through their beadwork, through their sewing, and uh, their crafts. So people take great pride in how they dress themselves, how they adorn themselves, and the intricacy of the work that in the time that it takes to master all of this work that you see in fine detail in this regalia. So today, um, I'm dressed in this way to do some storytelling. I really love the youth and as an educator and speaker, I travel across the nation and I represent my people, I represent my family, I represent myself and my culture to the best of my ability. So when I am called upon to teach or to stand up in any way, I dress in this way. I have several different regalias that I, I wear because I have a loving family and friends who've helped me along the way. I design my own regalia and uh, I, I do a lot of these designs that I'm really blessed to have put together here for you. I'm known uh, on the powwow trail as a northern traditional dancer. I also dance round bustle dance and war bonnet dance. So I have several different regalias that I wear. We have different regalias for our ceremonies. We have different regalias for our powwows. And we also have different regalias sometimes when we're just out dressed up in the community looking nice. And with each one of our regalia, there's a lot of time and care and respect involved with the regalia all the way to our feathers. And uh, so today I'm just going to briefly describe a little bit about this and, and uh, especially for our children and our non-indigenous relatives and as well as our own people who might want to learn um, something that a uh, new idea or something new that they may have not heard. Um, first of all, I'm going to acknowledge this uh, fan. This here is uh, Melkanoops which is a golden eagle. This is a wing fan. And uh, these are very sacred to us, very valuable. We value our feathers. And if you ever work on feathers, you know how delicate they can be. So it's with great care that we hold and carry and use these feathers because they also have a lot of spiritual significance with the teachings and the ceremonies that these are conducted in. And when we lift them up and when we brush 
each other off and different things that they're used in a very spiritual and a prayerful way. There's many times I'm at powwows and people want to come up and start touching and, and uh, you know, grabbing at these feathers, but that is not allowed because, we, again, we hold these very carefully. We are caretakers of these and they have a lot of meaning to us. They have a great purpose in our life. And uh, we could talk more about that, you know, in further detail on the spiritual significance of these feathers. But we also honor the relationships to, you know, the hawks, which is uh, another bird that we use. And I, I, on my outfit, I have different, different uh, birds that you'll see that are represented here in my regalia that adorn here as well as my other outfits that, that we have a sacred relationship with our birds and uh, many teachings that come along with the birds. And um, you know, that's a whole nother story, a whole nother series to talk about there. But the same, same wise, we have a sacred relationship to our animal relatives. You know, here you see the otter, otter, the letku, we call him letku. These are all otter furs that are here. And um, this is what adorns me today, as well as the tektups. This here is a buck. This is the one of the deer. You see his toes right there. And as well as all the buckskin that are on this regalia here, too is also from the deer. So as a hunter, we, we learn to not to be wasteful with the animals, that every single part of these animals can be used and honored. So within that way, you know, when we, we hunt and we learn to tan hides, we learn to take care of, you know, these animals. So their life, their spirit will be adorned and honored on the dance floor with us. So even as a hunter, if we um, take the life of the animal, that, that we have that communication and we always acknowledge the animal that his life will always continue on, you know, with us and the place that we go to pray and to dance and to celebrate life and that these animals will always be honored in our memory and our thoughts, that they adorn our journey and our travels. And on here, I have a lot of different beadwork. I'm on my father's side. I'm Suknakin Ur Sinaiks Ulskoyalp. I'm from the Okanagan, the Arrow Lakes, and from the Kettle Falls. On my mother's side, I'm Nimipu, which they often refer to as Walwama. We are from the Chief Joseph Band and Nez Perce people from Wallawa, Oregon. I unfortunately lost my mother when I was two months old, but when I dance, I honor my mother. So I have a lot of my regalia from our Nimipu, our Nez Perce designs that adorn me, you know, and I think of my mom and uh, I honor her and the legacy of our brave warriors, you know, who fought in battle during the 1877 war, um, the Nez Perce War, that people often um, remember Chief Joseph. And uh, that's my people there on, on my mother's side. So I represent them in the designs that you see, geometric designs, because at one time, um, you could tell uh, a tribe whose tribe you are just by the regalia that you are wearing because all of our um, regalia signifies also our tribal lineage and heritage and sometimes even family. You could tell family um, differences just by the colors, designs and, and face paint and so forth. And I also um, have here some of the modern 
contemporary because nowadays you have modern advancements, like sewing machines and so forth, embroidery. So, you know, we ha our people are very uh, crafty. They're very brilliant with the designs and uh, the creativity that they continue to just make new designs. And, and uh, to me, this here on my reach cloth, you see this woman with the war bonnet and the color red. And I, that to me signifies the uh, missing and murdered indigenous women. I wear that in honor and recognition of our women who are missing and our, unfortunately, we have a high, high uh, rate of, of women that have gone missing and murdered. And, and uh, we stand up and acknowledge them and continue them with our prayers. And uh, I developed, a, composed a song, that I, I, a prayer song for the missing and murdered indigenous women. Right here, I got this one here in Methow, my, my cola, Jared Lands, of all people, he made this. And this here is a porcupine quill medallion. And these are pretty rare to, to, to get and takes a lot of work, time and effort. But the materials to dye the porcupine quills and the skill to, to create out of porcupine quills it's very rare these days to find that. So I'm really fortunate to have that. As well as a lot of the things that you'll see here on my regalia, you know, all take a lot of time because if you looked at it very closely, you see that each and every single bead is tacked down. So these are thousands and thousands of beads just for here. and Each one has to be tacked down. So if you can imagine the patience and the skill and repetition involved in doing every single bit of, of work. And uh, a lot of people, they never acknowledge the amount of work that we do to our clothing and to our regalia and, and what it means to us and what it symbolizes to us. But I know um, there is a difference and how you feel when you're dressed up in your regalia. But however, modern society, unfortunately, they only look at us if we have our regalia on. I've been in, at powwows in front of a family who wants you to hold their baby. They want to take pictures and they want to know everything about you. The next thing, half an hour later or so, you come by in your just regular street clothes and they have nothing to say to you, you know. And that's the unfortunate part that a lot of uh, um, society, they don't recognize us. They have only is the thing of history. They recognize us from the things that they see painted on walls and old, old historic photographs. But regardless of what we look like, with regalia or not, we have the same spirit, we have the same teachings, we have the same um, spiritual power and strength and knowledge and wisdom within us, no matter how we are dressed. But this here is acknowledging our sacred relationship to the animals. It signifies even our challenges and strengths in life. Like here, the horse, I have a whole story just on what that horse means to me and how it has helped me to maintain sobriety. And just yesterday, I celebrated 13 years clean and sober, and that's what I acknowledge with that horse because there's a whole story behind that. So if you asked about regalia, you could spend hours and even day sometimes, just through all the stories that these outfits tell about our story, our own personal story, our own things that we really enjoy in life, our own tribes, our own families, and our own beliefs. And uh, today, um, many of our people 
are not able to gather and to powwow and to dance and celebrate life, you know, like we did over a year ago. But our dances are also a way of praying and, and celebrate life and to all of this connection with all of these things here in life. So to me today, you know, I just wanted to share this few uh, things that I could uh, show you really quick on regalia, but we also have to understand um, the care of our outfits, to always be careful with them and, and to, um, so that's why we just ask people to be respectful, you know, when they're around our regalia because they have such meaning to us. They also have much purpose and it takes a lot of work to care for these and just to get dressed in one of these, it takes a long time. I'm not even fully dressed, you know, and it takes, takes a long time to get dressed. And I just wanted to acknowledge that and uh, say thank you for listening to me and, and to learn about a little bit about the regalia that we wear. Lem Lemt.